Every single day I'll be making moves Till I'm buried in my grave Through the system I don't want to be a slave I EA Sports just... coverage Of the National Football League Is on the air Tonight It is all On the line We play for the Lombardi Trophy As it'll be the AFC champion Houston Texans Taking on the NFC champions The Detroit Lions with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, a CD, this Houston team. This is a franchise that's only been around since 2002. Been a bit of a bumpy ride along the way, but here they are in their first ever Super Bowl. And it's a unit that's believed in themselves. And let's face it, not many people believed in them going into the season. They were certainly not one of the favorites, but they've gotten better each week. And now they sit on the precipice of a first-ever title for any NFL team in the city of Houston. Meanwhile, for the Lions, it might be a state holiday in Michigan tomorrow if they can pull this one off. Their first-ever Super Bowl appearance as they try to win their first NFL title since 1957. Oh, I love how you announce. I love how you like to govern as well. A state holiday? Absolutely, if they pull this one off. And remember, this team trying to win, as you said, their first title since 1957. If they pull this off, it officially buries the Bobby Lane curse. And we are underway here in Las Vegas. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. So out come the Texans for their opening drive. And a glance here at their quarterback standing six foot three. And he spoke very eloquently and passionately on media day about what a victory here would mean for him. He knows this just isn't any other game. This is the kind of game that stays with you for a lifetime. If there's anyone on this field tonight who's most ready for this moment, I think it's this man right here. Play action. Here's Stroud. He'll get this into the hands of Nico Collins. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 28 yards the game there on the catch and run. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. A first carry for the former Oklahoma Sooner, Joe Mixon. And he tries to keep the legs churning, but he's going to be stopped behind the line. It's probably a pretty good sign here on the opening drive if your guys from the secondary are coming up and spilling things in the backfield. How about the adrenaline and aggressiveness that led his eyes to the backfield to run up there and make that tackle, setting a tone early for his defense. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. And they get to Stroud, nowhere to go, and he goes down. Aiden Hutchinson drops him for a loss of 10, and it's going to be fourth and long. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw up a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. Here's Tommy Townsend on to punt. Back deep, Khalif Raymond. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. 
So here are the Lions now coming out for their opening drive. They'll be led out by their quarterback, the guy out of California, the former Cal Bear, Jared Goff. And at one point, the ascension of Jared Goff was really, really strong. Back-to-back -back Pro Bowls, took his team to the Super Bowl, and came really within one quarter of winning it. But since that time, he's had bouts of inconsistency, and that's been the struggle for him as he tries to get back to the form he showed earlier in his career. Goff in this Lions offense, set for a first and 10 at their own 15. They'll try and start this drive in the air. So the completion good for just three. And that'll bring up second down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Here's Goff now on second down. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And St. Brown going to have the Lions first down as he'll get this to the 26-yard line. That'll go as a pickup of eight. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They'll get 17 that time, and the Lions have a first down. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus, and indeed, he gets enough for the first down. On first and 10, here's Gibbs. And a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42-yard line. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. So back-to-back -back big runs, picking apart this defense on the opening drive. I thought this was a passing league. I thought this was the <laughs> era we were in where the ball was always in the air, right? They didn't get the memo. They didn't get the memo, and I know this to be true. Offensive linemen still, to this day, they want to run the football. They want to fire out and hit people across the line of scrimmage, and they're clearing space. Danico Autry is in on the stop. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to Huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. And that one opened up for him well as he'll take this down to the 26-yard line. They'll get a dozen there, and the Lions have a first down. You were telling me this yesterday. This is exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation. We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game, and it's not necessarily size. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up, get leverage, knock people back, and establish the run early. So the completion results there in nine yards. And they'll have a second and one forthcoming. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. Goes to the corner right side. And he's going to be taken down right at the 10-yard line. And they clearly wanted to come out, Charles, and be aggressive throwing the football, and they've been pretty efficient along with that aggressiveness. He's now 4-4 on this opening drive. Yeah, and that's led to a fresh set of downs. I like what he's doing back there. You can tell he's at ease, feels good about what he's doing. And I think if I'm the play caller, I'm reading that, I'm continuing to let him throw the football. Touchdown! Khalif Raymond from 10 yards out. And the Lions are on the board first here in this Super Bowl. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. Point after, right down the middle. And that makes the score 7-0. 
So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And the end result, a Detroit touchdown. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And he's all the way up across the 40 and down at the 42. Great return. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Well, you gave up the first touchdown of the game, but how about the response? Big time return. Now it's their chance to try and put points on the board. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their own 42. A shotgun snap to Stroud. Throw over the middle is taken in by Dell. So they'll get nothing out of that play, and it'll be second down. Now the old pass completion for no gain, not something you want to call up out of the playbook too often. Yeah, most offensive coordinators don't have that on their play sheet, so they've got to go back and scramble after this one. But right now with what they're telling receivers about making sure you take care of the ball in open field sometimes the fighting for extra yardage doesn't come as a result that and good tackling can lead to no yards gained and he's brought down first grab so far for Diggs. it's a first down well, i think when they look at their offense they think to themselves weapons weapons everywhere and they want to move the ball around they want to spread it to different people but you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. Mixon with a first down carry. Fights off the defender. And he showed off the athletic juke. Good little game there. Not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. That's complete. It's Collins. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions 21. Give him 10 yards on that one, and that earns him a fresh set of downs. Even against double coverage, he found enough of an opening for a noticeable game. Two guys on him, yet he finds a way to uncover downfield for the completion. First and ten, it's Stroud. Catch is made, it's Schultz on the out route. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Another nice gain, 16 yards there at a first down again. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field, and just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. They'll give it to Mixon. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. The second down throw now from Stroud. Now he's got it. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. A big one here early in this Super Bowl. It's third and goal. Mixon. Will take this one in for a Texans touchdown. So the toss play effective even down here near the goal line. Yeah, and you're hoping the defense commits too many men to stop the run in the middle of the field and that your blockers can gain a little bit of an advantage. And when they do, foot race to the pylon. And this time, he had the speed to win that race.
Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Back onto the field come the Lions for their second overall drive. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn into a play action, and throw it one deep. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. That brings us to the end of one in Super Bowl 58. Much more to come from Las Vegas after this. Seven all is the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Second and six, just inside the 30. Welcome back to the date on the calendar we circle every year. Super Bowl Sunday, Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis here with you as we get set to begin quarter two. The touch and time are critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Out of the gun, gone. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. A good pick up there, a 22. That's a big gainer on that play. And from experience, I can tell you, that's where defensive backs will come into the huddle and say, guys, how about some pass rush? But you're going to say it nicely because those big guys up front, they don't like being criticized very much. Quarterbacks in this league, you know they'll pick you apart if you give them time like that to find receivers downfield. Gibbs straight ahead. 41 yards rushing for him now to this point. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? From the 44 now, here's second and four. Back to throw, Goff. And he couldn't get that one to his man. Short of him, it's low and incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the gun, here's Goff. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 15-yard line. That gain on third down, good for 28. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw, and they hooked up there for a first down. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Now back to the ground. Here's Gibbs. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13.
So it's the big left tackle who gets tagged with a hold. And sometimes you're actually executing the block well, and he starts to slip off of you, and instinctively you reach out and grab him. And when it's done like that, it's often seen by the official and called. Goff going to get this to Gibbs. And he's taken down after a gain of three as they move it from the 22 to the 19. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal game. A shotgun snap for Goff. A quick throw there is incomplete. He's trying to get it to Amon Ross St. Brown, and it's third down. Going to need a crafty play call here. 14 yards is what they need to try to convert this thing. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. That pass caught. It's Williams. And the Lions are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And that could be one of those turning point plays in a ball game. A field goal gets you the lead here, but they want to make a statement and get six points. And they're certainly going to get that opportunity as they get the conversion and set up first and goal. Gibbs. Oh, good move. And yeah, not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. That run didn't get very far, and I think when you're looking at his dimensions, he's a little bit on the smaller side. He's counting on the big guys up front to escort him in, and they couldn't create any kind of space for him, could they? Yeah, didn't get the push they needed. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Montgomery. Diving for the end zone, and he is in. Touchdown. So partner was a passing game that drove them down the field, but when they get close, they trust that man in the backfield, and he took them home. And they trust their offensive line as well because so many of these units, they specialize in either pass protection or run blocking. This group shows his versatility and gets both done on this drive. Extra point attempt to follow here. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it was David Montgomery's touchdown run that polished it all off. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. Heading out is the Texans' offense as they get set to take over here. As this offense comes back out here, Charles, they're trailing in this ball game. And they've been on the sideline for a while. They did score their last time out, but they just had to watch that long, sustained drive. So we'll see if they can shake the rust off. Yeah, and that's always a, a question that you have when you have to come off the bench after having sat there for a long time. Are you ready to go? Are you loosened up? But even more so, are you mentally alert and ready to put your best product out there? Stroud to the air on first and 10. And a dangerous throw there, incomplete. He threw that into coverage. It was nearly intercepted. Those are the ones you dream of as defenders. I think if he gets eyes on the ball a little bit earlier, he might come away with it. Instead, it's going to wind up as just an incomplete pass. Second and 10, Stroud to throw yet again here. This goes out wide for Mixon. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. I know it was a gain, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay game. Stroud. 
Now an off-balance throw there, and it's going to wind up incomplete. Like what I see so far out of this defense because they've been showing their best coverages on third down. So far, only allowed one conversion on a handful of attempts. One area of their game plan that they've executed to perfection. Here's Tommy Townsend now as he'll kick it away for the second time. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. But Jameer Gibbs in the Lions offense getting set once again. A good job in the passing game. Decent job in the running game, but really they've been more effective uh, through the air. We'll see if that shifts at all as this goes on. Thus far, it feels like they're calling this game in reverse. Normally, you run to set up the pass. Here, it feels like they're passing, hoping to set up the run and be more effective later on in the game. Yeah, you can do it both ways. We usually talk about, well, this is taken in. It's complete. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. What a play that turns out to be, 36 yards. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty you know, excited about the big plays. Let's face it, that's what we absolutely look for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. So the big play gets them across midfield now for first and 10. Straight ahead with Gibbs here. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Golf throw going into the hands of Williams. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 25-yard line. Goff now looking to throw. That one almost intercepted, but it's incomplete. Not a good throw there, and it'll be second down. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just talking about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. To throw is gone. Got his man, it's Williams. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. Gibbs will try and pick it up. You, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. They'll go again with Gibbs. And he's taken down at the seven after a gain of seven. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Second down and three. Ball on the seven. Now it's Goff off the bootleg. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. on third down. A perfect four for four thus far. This time it's third and three. Here's Goff. To the back of the end zone but too high. Over everybody and incomplete. Now after the play it looks like there's a Texan here slow to get up. We'll take a break and get a report from Vegas after this.
Well, the offense is not leaving the field. They're going to stay out and go for it on fourth and three. Montgomery, they'll run for it. And he will have the first down before he's brought down at the three. A solid pickup of five and a very solid fourth down conversion and defensively pure frustration. They'll run with Gibbs. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Defense really sold out there to stop the run. Understandable down near the goal line. Now on second down, you have to wonder, might we see play action here and a flip right over the top? Again, it's Gibbs. And he's going to take it in for a Lion touchdown. Jameer Gibbs, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Lions continue to look good here in the first half of this Super Bowl. So, Charles, that's three touchdowns on three drives, and it's just been an offensive barrage so far. Great word, partner, using barrage right there. I'm going to add another word if you don't mind. How about perfection? No surprise that they're leading right now. Absolute dominance throughout this ball game, and no signs of slowing down. Extra point splits the uprights, and it's now 21-7. to That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it was all capped off by a touchdown run from Jameer Gibbs. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Houston's offense taken over again. The Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now? is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Now they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and 10. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Collins. And a nice pick up there as he'll get about nine, and that will lead us to a stoppage here at the two-minute warning. Stroud now to throw. He finds his target. It's Schultz. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. Stroud now on first and ten. That's caught again by Schultz. A big change in field position there. That's 40 yards on the catch and run. And the offense is saying to itself right now, only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Stroud working out of the gun. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. That's a tough spot for a running back coming out of the backfield because you know he's got to look for the football. Knowing full well, he's got a man coming his way full steam, and he broke that one up. Here's second and 10. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. Got his man, Dell. 
And the Texans are going to have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the seven-yard line. Stroud to throw it. This is caught. That's good for a gain of six, second and goal. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. Second and goal, one man stands in the backfield, and that's Mixon. Stroud looking to throw. And got his man, it's caught. Touchdown, Houston. Stephon Diggs, a one-yard touchdown reception. And the Texans get a late score here in the final minute of the first half. Well, with this rookie QB, we talk a lot about his ball placement and how good he can be at laying it right in there. I think we just saw, Charles, though, the strength of that arm. That was an absolute rifle for the completed touchdown. It absolutely was, and let's face it, you think he was really ready to get that first touchdown? Absolutely. He threw that pass with authority, just as you described. Big-time arm right there, and let's face it, a lot of quarterbacks used to be pitchers in baseball. The fastball was usually their best pitch, and we saw it there. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. And this taken in at the goal line. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. And the Lions going to go back on offense one final time in this first half. And with a seven-point lead, they'll likely look to take this to the locker room and not really press the issue. seconds to go. We'll see how they play it here on first and ten. Goff now to throw. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. Setting up the screen. This is Gibbs. And he'll be about a full yard shy of the 20 at the 19-yard line. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. So we've come upon halftime in the big one, the Super Bowl. As we send you to our EA studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. In the first half, it was the Alabama man, Jameer Gitt, who had it cooking. He had a touchdown run that helped get his guys this halftime lead. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. These two teams sat through a longer than usual 30-minute wait, but we're back in action here in this Super Bowl. And the half will begin with a touchback. And the Lions getting set to go on offense to start the third. 
they have played so strongly. You look at the scoreboard, you, you probably, with the way they played, you would think the margin would be a lot bigger, right? You would. And in your experience, how many times have we run into coaches where they've talked about, hey, we just want to put it in the hands of our defense and have them win the game? In this case, yeah, not the case. Not at all. You want to put it in the hands of your offense, but you always feel better about seeing defense because you think defense is a constant and offense kind of comes and goes. Today, <laughs> this game, no, they need their offense to stay on a really hot level. They've been hot so far. He's airing it out for Williams. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Gibbs on the toss left. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And force the incompletion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. Here's third and nine. Goff now looks to throw. Oh, that is incomplete. And so many times we look at the opening drive of the third quarter as a tone setter, and many coaches do emphasize it, and that's a strong performance there defensively to force incompletion, and more importantly, force a quick punting situation. Here comes the Lions punter now, as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. It'll be a 44-yard punt, six on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Here's the Texans' offense now, readying for their first possession of the second half. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense them saying, OK, the first half was theirs, but now let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced a punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for this second half. On first down, here's Stroud. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble. That could have been trouble. Fortunate to get that football back. Because trailing here in the second half, last thing they needed was to lose the possession. And the word I think of here is opportunity. Because it could have been lost there. Their chance to score points. But the opportunity for the defense was to go ahead and really close this game down if they were able to get possession. After the sack, oh, they're staring at a challenge basically from the other side of town. It's second and a country mile. It's Mixon on the counter. Oh, able to avoid him. And nothing doing here is this time the run maybe gets him back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. Call it no gain there, and they've got a ways to go now on third down. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Stroud here on third and long. And the Lions pressure too strong. Down he goes. That sack courtesy of Jack Campbell. Well, this is what happens when you get behind the chains, as people like to say, when you have obvious passing situations, hard to vary it up and fool a defense. And you hate those situations if you're an O-lineman, right? Oh, without a doubt, because you just know they're coming, and you never know exactly how. They can be exotic in their blitzes, or their athletic ability just takes over. So a change of possession here on the punt. So the Lions offense ready to go back out onto the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. And they start things off with a carry by Gibbs here. And this one not going anywhere. They get him at the 44 for a gain of just a yard. They know that old expression, it's not my night, 
it hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. It's a pretty strong running there as he'll take this across the 50 and down to the 44. 68 yards rushing for him in the ball game now on 14 carries. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. Another run for Gibbs here. And he's going to be stopped at about the 37. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. On second down, Montgomery. Great move by Montgomery. Another miss. Still on his feet. Touchdown, Detroit. David Montgomery. His second touchdown of this Super Bowl. And the Lions will extend their third quarter lead here in this Super Bowl. So that CD, that was impressive. He got out of three, maybe four tackles there on his way to the end zone. And a lot of times when you break a tackle or slip a tackle, it actually slows you down. That's what we were taught. If you don't make the play, make him stop his feet so someone else can get there and tackle him. But not here. He just kept right on going. No going for two. They'll kick the point after. He's got it as they double up the lead. This one's now 28-14. So that drive, four plays. And it was David Montgomery's touchdown run that polished it all off. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee and they'll start at the 25. The Texans offense set to regain possession. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Throwing now is Stroud. This one left side caught by Collins. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Now Stroud. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players. Somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Meanwhile, Stroud's throw complete into the hands of Schultz here. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions' 45-yard line. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right, safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but mainly they want him out there to block. 
nowadays an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. The throwing again is Stroud. And that one to the right side and incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they're in a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Third quarter, Super Bowl 58. Here's a second and 10 now. Stroud. Pass the 20. Touchdown, Houston. Stephon Diggs, his second touchdown of this Super Bowl. And the Texans are back within a score. As a fan, is there anything prettier than a well-executed post route? No, it's a thing of beauty, especially when it's done like that for a touchdown. How uh, the throw, the catch, and how about the run after to get it to the end zone? On for the PAT, Kaimi Fairbear. He's got it, and they're back within a touchdown at 28-21. So that drives six plays, 75 yards. And it's finished off by the touchdown by Stephon Diggs. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. Good time for another look at this Lions offense. And their lead cut in half by that touchdown a moment ago. They are up seven as they begin this drive first and ten. Drive starts with a run from Gibbs. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Second down, and they go back to Gibbs. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. 90 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. He continues to be effective running the football, a big reason that they have the lead. And I love one of the quotes that I read about him where he said, of himself, I love it when a team just hops on my back and I just carry them along. Hand off now to Gibbs. That's a good acceleration there as he's across midfield to the 48-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 48-yard line. He's got it to Williams. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. On first and 10, here's Gibbs. They'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. And the ball on the 30. Here's second and four. Back to throw. Goff. Open now is Raymond. He's got it. He's up now to 80 yards receiving in the ball game. And he's got a first down. On 
to give. Here's Gibbs. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Second down and four. Now run by Gibbs. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Nine yards on the play there, and it'll set him up first and goal. We are through three quarters of play here from Allegiant Stadium in Super Bowl 58. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we're back in the Super Bowl. Time to decide who gets to hoist that Lombardi trophy as we begin the fourth and final quarter of action. Golf. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Down near the goal line, things really get physical. You're always anticipating a running play, but when they do throw it, things happen quickly. A little bit of a bang-bang play there that falls incomplete. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. And Gibbs has it. And he takes this one in for a Lions touchdown. Jameer Gibbs. His second touchdown of this Super Bowl. And the Lions are starting to pull away in the fourth quarter of this Super Bowl. Sometimes you get a first and goal and you're back near the seven, eight, nine yard line and you start thinking, maybe we'll run it here on first down to get half of what we need so maybe we can have two or three shots at going for it from closer range. So this is a bonus right here. What a great run to work his way into the end zone. Extra point right down the middle. And the lead now up to 14. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was all capped off by a touchdown run from Jameer Gibbs. Here are the Lions now as they line up and kick this one away. Taking it about the one. Houston set to take over. So remember, Charles, last time they were out here, they scored, but they just saw the opposition score, and they're trailing right now, so they're trying to keep pace here. They need a touchdown drive. Well, if you're a fan of offense, you're loving this, but if you're a fan of defense, this is tough to watch, and it's also tough to keep that up when you've just watched your opponent march down the field on a scoring drive the last into double-digit snaps. You need a score here not just to follow the momentum from your last drive, but put the onus back on your opponent. And that's what they're doing right now, swapping that onus back and forth. Stroud's throw taken in by Diggs. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones in a first down. Fourth quarter, every drive's so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. Mixon with a first down carry. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. That's Aiden Hutchinson. He was determined to blow that play up, but he sure did. There's no question that coming into this game, this defense was pretty vocal about his desire to take this running back out of his game. And all that pregame wolfing has turned into results. Here's Stroud. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Nowadays, quarterbacks don't mind throwing in the coverage because of the confidence they have in their receivers to come down with the ball. But sometimes you have to be careful you don't get too confident and throw an interception. The offense on third down, they've only converted once in four tries. This is going to be third and 13. Operating from the gun, Stroud. And under the Lions' pressure, he's brought down. 
Aiden Hutchinson able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. How about that, partner? His second sack of the game, and that puts him in some pretty good company. 17 guys have had two sacks in the previous 52 Super Bowls, but only three have had the record number of three sacks in this game. And we've got the list here. If he gets another one and everyone behaves nicely, we might just list those out for him. This is fielded at the 27. It's a return of four following a 42-yard punt. Now, Jameer Gibbs and the rest of the offense headed back out. And you'd have to figure, he got the ball quite a bit last drive. You see the numbers that now they're looking to choose some clock. He's going to get it even more here. I would think so because they have momentum going in their direction. They move the ball that way on their last drive, and you know they're trying to lock this game down. But also, don't be surprised if they mix in a few passes along the way as well so they can't just totally key on him on this drive. Interesting. We'll see if that happens. Either way, looking to hold this lead. Let's see if they can do it. They'll start this drive out on the ground. They'll get it across the 35. It'll be second down. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Second down, and they go back to Gibbs. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. 141 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Brendan, every great running backs coach that I've talked with has always talked about when you have great vision, you're not consciously thinking about your cuts and your moves. You're just doing them. And I think that's what we're seeing tonight. He's about run them into submission, uh, hasn't he? You took the words right out of my mouth. I was just going to use that phrase. He has run them into submission. Wave the white flag. Two yards on the pickup there, and that'll make it second down. From the gun, here's Goff. Throw to St. Brown, complete on the left side. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. Here comes third and about a foot. In motion, the tight end. On third down, here's Gibbs. And great blocking downfield as he's got this almost to the 35-yard line. It's a gain of 10 for the Lions and a first down. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long, he's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger, and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead. You've got to protect it, and he's taking chances, putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? Throwing on third, Goff. Able to find the open man, that's complete. And in for the Lions, touchdown. Amon Ross St. Brown, 38 yards. And the Lions are feeling good as they extend their lead in the Super Bowl. I've heard you use the term put-away drive, and that right there seemed like the definition of a put-away drive. Yeah, it certainly just pops right up out of the book, doesn't it? Because up two scores already, just wanted to possess the football, keep converting and picking up first downs, and if the drive ends in three points, that's terrific. If it ends in a touchdown, fantastic. 
point after, right down the middle. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. And the Texans set to come onto the field. And it's becoming more and more apparent that this is just not going to be their night. That Lombardi trophy so close, but the expectations simply have not matched the results as they start on this drive first and 10. They'll throw it with Stroud here, first and 10. Now a diving effort right sideline. He's got it. And nothing to speak of there after the catch as they get him right to the ground at the 37. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. And Stroud now to throw. They'll set up the screen here to mix him. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. Well, they certainly have their share of troubles running the football in this one, but this play is almost an extension of the running game right here. They set up the screen, let him work out in space on the perimeter, and he turns it into a big pickup. First and 10, it's Stroud. He's got the connection over the middle to Diggs. And he's taken down inside the 30. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. Kirby Joseph there to drop him. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. They're going to hurry back to the line now. The second down throw now from Stroud. To mix it on the check down. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. Just a gain of a couple there. And now we've got a third down and three. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. And that is caught. Touchdown, Texans. Brevin Jordan. A 22-yard touchdown grab. And the Texans have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good, CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you'd kept them out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And the Lions are able to cover this one up. The well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, 
the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 48. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time. And that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Here's Goff. That is caught, and he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. A golf to St. Brown for the Detroit first down. Well, probably the only thing he did wrong there was go out of bounds, nursing this fourth quarter lead. You want to stay in, eat the clock. Yeah, you got to love the effort, the catch, the extra yardage, but you've got to know the situation. Stay in bounds, young man. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now a give running right is Montgomery. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Gibbs straight ahead. And strong running there as he's inside the 10 and down to the 8-yard line. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. The Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. See if the defense wants to stop it as they take the knee. So they're backed up to the three yard line, second and goal. Gibbs. Will struggle to get to the line of scrimmage as he'll be tackled back at the four-yard line. He lost two there, and it's third down. And this is where the mental part of the game comes into play. Defense is out of timeouts. Just hold on to the football. No sense really trying to score. They should be able to run this one out. Time for this one final knee to put a bow on this title bout. I don't know why we did it, but we went to their final walkthrough for some reason. And what did we see? Their last play and walkthrough was taking a knee and celebrating winning a Super Bowl. They wanted that visualization. 
they did it for real. Yeah, they just scripted it out. Defense can't stop the clock, and they can watch the final seconds tick. And the Lions, yes, the Detroit Lions, have won the Super Bowl. For the victors getting to hoist that Lombardi trophy, you know, we've talked to guys that have done it, and they say there's no better feeling in sports. I don't know how there can be. The, the, the journey to get to this game is incredible. And then to finally break through and win it when all eyes are on this game alone because there's nothing else going on, that's just got to be absolutely amazing. That The task, incredible. But the accomplishment, forever.